Hi guys, so today I'm gonna show you makeup for classic type women. And if you're new, you can check my body type series or Kibi image identities. I'm gonna leave the link down below so you could check that. Before we go to the makeup itself, let's remember how normally classic women look. So classic is the overall combination of the perfect balance between the yin and yang extremes. Symmetrical physicality and cool, reserved essence. Normally they are moderate in size. Their bone structure is symmetrical with a tendency towards slight sharpness. Slightly angular, slightly straight, tapered shoulders, evenly proportioned bust, waist and hips. Facial features are chiseled, symmetrical and evenly spaced. Okay, now let's go to the makeup itself. So I've already applied my foundation, powdered my face. Again, you can choose whatever you like, dewy skin or matte skin, whichever you're comfortable with. My personal face structure is very far from classic face. So to make it all more real for you guys, I'm now gonna contour my face a little bit more just to look a little bit more like classic. I will have to make my face look more oval. So for that purpose, I'm taking very dark contouring powder and I'm applying it on the sides of my face, pretty heavily actually, just to create that illusion. Of course, you don't have to do this. To make my jawline a bit more strong, I'm applying some contouring powder under my chin and a little bit on my neck, a bit on the sides of my forehead. So when you, as a classic, are contouring your cheekbones, blend it very well. Even if you're going for a slightly darker shade for the evening, blend it very well. Don't do it super rounded and don't do it super sharp, super angular. Just build the color bit by bit with clean fluffy brush until you reach that certain condition of an illusion of a real shadow under your cheekbone. That's all you need. You don't have to over contour your face. Now I'm gonna contour my nose. I will try to make it slightly less prominent, less sharp and less long. Just to balance it a little bit because classics normally have very average middle sized nose. Now I'm gonna contour my cheekbones. What I have in my face, I have very prominent cheeks. So when I turn my head a little bit to a side and if I smile a little bit, you can see that this place in my face becomes very prominent. My cheeks are slightly lowered. And this is what makes the difference between me and classic as well. So I'm gonna darken that area. And then I'm blending this contouring slightly up, but not down. I need to create that shadow under my cheekbones slightly higher than my natural cheekbones are right here. This way I will kind of divide my face into two equal pieces and that will help me to balance my face, make it look more classic. But I normally don't do it for my own makeup because I like my round face and my lower cheekbones. Now I'm gonna take light powder and I'm gonna apply it on the bottom of my face. I need to make it more prominent, more coming forward because my chin is too tiny, too pointed. And my bottom part under my nose is smaller than the rest of my face. So I need to make it kind of slightly larger just to balance my face. And again, you as a classic don't have to do this. It's just to make it slightly more real for you guys. In majority cases, from my opinion, you are great to go without any contouring. Because I think in many cases, contouring can create some noise. This noise is very serious on classic faces. It just jumps into the eyes. Everything that is slightly dirty, patchy, too many colors, too many products, too much of everything. This is what can kill some sophistication and classics appearance. Now I'm gonna apply a little bit of a shimmer. You can do that or not do that. That's up to you. Too much shimmer or too much ornate face is normally not for classics. Classics normally don't look as good with over-the-top makeup, with everything that is over the top. So I'm adding that shimmer just for freshness, just to give my skin a dewy effect. Now I'm gonna define my brows just because my brows are almost invisible and just to balance my face. Basically I'm doing my brows like I normally do for myself. They're not super thin, not super thick, not very dark, not very light. Something very balanced, something that would fit the roots of your hair would be good. The only thing I would not recommend for classics is very bushy brows, unplugged brows, very thick brows. Now I'm gonna use white eyeshadow and I'm gonna apply it all over my lids, basically around my eyes. It will give me a lot of freshness. It will make my lids slightly transparent, very gentle skin. It's a good base for me to do eye makeup and also it clears the look, it makes the face look very clean. And if you have darker skin than me, maybe you can choose something that would be the lightest for your type but still would not be visible, not like solid white color. My white is still transparent, so it just lightens a bit, makes my skin there slightly lighter, shining and more even. You can go like that or you can add something on your lips. I'm choosing that matte lip crayon, pink color. You can use whatever you have, whatever you like for your lips. So many of you probably are good to go like that. But let's add some more. So I'm adding mascara. 
very important thing for classics not only for them but i just want to stress it now make the lash line dark work on your lash line pretty thoroughly between your lashes that's very important when you're using mascara try to use it right from the roots make the ends of the lashes very thin kind of goes to nowhere very furry work on the lash line that's very important that's very beautiful on classics you can use mascara only on your top lashes or you can do it on the bottom as well i'm gonna use a little bit on the bottom I like this look on myself, so I would probably be ready to go like that. I'm sure you too. To make my face a little bit more fresh, I'm gonna apply some pink blush. It should be matte blush or slightly shimmery, not super shimmery. I'm also applying it on the top of my forehead. Now I want to accentuate my lips a little bit more, so I'm taking this lip color pencil, slightly dusty pink color, and I'm applying it on my lips. I slightly overdraw my lips just to balance my face a little bit more and make it look more like classics. So I think in many cases you're good to go like that. Now I'm taking black pencil, not the liquid eyeliner, but pencil. I sharpen it and I'm very thoroughly working all that space between my lashes. I'm making my lash line very thin, very black and very neat. That's important. We don't want to see all those gaps between lashes, under lashes. And then I'm doing that little flick. This is a great example of a daytime classic makeup with very soft eyeliner, pink lips, a little bit of blush, clear skin and neat brows. And I'm adding a little bit of that pink color on my eyes. The more uniform the look will be, uniform meaning like one color is here and the same color is here. That gives that very neat effect. I probably made it too bright, but just to show you. Okay, now we are going closer to that Hollywood makeup. So I'm applying some dark brown eyeshadow on my crease. And I blend it very well and I try to do it very neat. I also apply some under my eyes, but it's optional. Then I'm taking very thin brush and I'm going over that crease fold, mimicking the thinner shadow there. I'm also using matte brown eyeshadow for that. Now I want to do my liner more intense. Classics normally look much better with slightly blended eyeliner, as opposed to very sharp liquid eyeliner. So for that purpose I'm using thin wet brush and black matte eyeshadow. I'm not necessarily making this line too thin, I still want it to be noticeable from the distance. And also I draw this line right to the inner corner, till the very ends of my eyes, on both ends. That really balances the eyes. We just created a second type of makeup, classic makeup. Not old Hollywood yet, but still we are good to go like that. It's a great evening makeup, it's a great wedding makeup. Now let's look at some classic celebrities. Look at them, see the difference. So Grace Kelly is a very good example of classic. She's very balanced. Her facial features are evenly spaced. She really knew what fitted her and look at her face, how modern it actually looks. Don't you find the way that she did her makeup slightly timeless? It looks modern. You can see women doing their makeup like that nowadays. We can't see that much of a makeup. We can't see any geometrical figures drawn on her face. We can't even say if she used any brow products on her brows. Her eyeliner has always been slightly blended. She used very gentle color for her lips, but they were very neat and sharply defined. She did do slight contouring, but we kind of don't see that. And her eyes are not overloaded with makeup when she has red lips. So this is Rosamund Pike. You can see again, very clean face, slightly dewy, well-shaped brows. She has hooded eyes and she has very defined lash line here. Her lashes are thin and slightly elongated. She has very natural color on her cheeks. Same color I can see on her crease, same gentle color on her lips. So is in the second picture. She also has some blush and some brighter lips. Everything is done very neat. Here she has that sleek, sophisticated red lips look. A bit more contouring, but still very blue. Blended. Again, we don't see any geometric figures drawn on her face. That blunt edged hair or sleek hair with a central parting looks amazing. And red lips, as classic as it can be. And again, we don't see that much eyeshadow. You can see that space between her lash line and the brow. It's basically clean. On these two pictures, she has more nude look. Also very beautiful. Again, we don't see as much makeup. Everything is very clean and very symmetrical, including hair and clothes. So from my viewpoint, when she adds that liquid eyeliner, this is what I meant by geometrical element, I think it makes her look slightly older than she is. Instead of brightening the eyes, it makes them look heavier and tired. Also, they don't look as good with loads of colors and loads of blending, shimmer, or too much ornateness added to that. Sometimes they even can have some clownish effect. Also, every time they do many experiments with their hair, their makeup, punk looks, or some unblended, smoky eye, tousled hair, or something. Some sophistication kind of goes away a little bit. 
January Jones. I showed examples with her many times in my body type series. Here we can see same situation. Very crisp lash line. Not too much contouring, not too much eyeshadow. Very neat brows, neat hair. Slight blush of pinkish lips. All that gives so much sophistication. She also liked to experiment sometimes with colors, with application. So here we can see that heavy green smoky eye makeup also blended too much to the inner corner. So everything that is over the top is not very suited to classics. And you might say that, yeah, but nobody probably will look great with that kind of makeup. I will disagree with that because probably in the future I will make some videos about that. I will show you how, for example, Gamin body type and classic type would look with same makeup and how different they will look. Yeah, sometimes it can be just makeup problem. So none of the types would look good with such a makeup. But sometimes that's really a bone structure that's really a certain type. Also classics don't look very good when they do both eyes and lips bright. Again that gives them slightly clownish effect, slightly over the top, too much for them. Also here some geometric lines or too much blending or too many colors added to the look. Yeah it's original, it's interesting, but it's not their signature look, it's not their go-to makeup. And here I can show you yeah pretty close makeup but these two pictures are slightly different. What is the difference? On the left she looks a bit more like natural. Those huge earrings, tousled hair, thicker brows, all that gives slightly untidy effect on classics and close but not there yet. And on the right she combed her hair, clean skin, as clean as she could achieve. Sharply lined lips, not as blended as on the left picture. Very bright dark lash line, without too much eyeshadow or blending. Thinner brows, cleaner jewelry, that plays a good role in art, that can change the whole look. So looking on so many beautiful classic women, I decided to give my bob that blunt look. Not quite old Halloween, but we are concentrating more on makeup techniques. So finally I'm making my lips red and it has already been sharply defined. It should look very neat and sharp. Now it's time for smoky eye makeup. No more red lips for that look. I'm picking that grey matte eyeshadow for that. I'm applying on my lid. If you're doing this look better if you start with no foundation on. Dark eyeshadow falls down like crazy. I always keep in mind that my pupil is in the center. So I'm blending my eyeshadow on both sides, not just to the outer corner. Because sometimes when you're working with dark colors on light skin, that can look very unbalanced. If your inner part of the eye is light and the outer part of your eye is very loaded with intense color. Also when you're blending the eyeshadow, don't go to your brows of course when you just reached your crease fold just blend it very well in a rounded manner you can elongate your eyes slightly on the sides but still your center is your pupil repeat your own features with colors so that's what I'm gonna do on the bottom. I'm not gonna do my waterline, even though you can try to do that and see how that works on you. Make sure it's not too aggressive on your face. And if it's not, then you're good to go with that. If it is too aggressive, that's what I suggest you to do. Use same dark matte eyeshadow. You can use brown eyeshadow for your smoky eye. Take small brush, the best would be pencil brush, the one that I use, and very carefully go between your lashes and blend this line. Blend this eyeshadow right into your lash line. And again, don't forget to check your pupil. It should be in the center. Don't overload your eyes only on the outer corners. And also watch out not to do a droopy effect because if you overload the outer corner with the eyeshadow too much, then you make this outer corner too heavy. So here I'm making sure that I go along my eye shape. My eyes rounded. I make it also rounded. Of course I'm adding some mascara because I have some powder that fell down on my lashes before. Probably you won't look as good with spider and clumpy lashes. And now I'm gonna add some color back on my lips just to balance and finish the look. Repeat your own features with colors. Don't invent a new face on top of yours. Alright, that's the final look. Let me know in the comments if you tried it or not, did it work or not. Also, maybe there are certain points that I didn't mention in that video. So please comment about that below. We all are very interested in your personal experience as well. Subscribe to my Patreon, I answer the questions there. And it's a huge support for me as a creator. You can also check my Pinterest. I created 13 boards as an inspiration for all those body types or kibi types. All the links I'm gonna leave down below. Also, you can check my music channel. I upload covers almost every week now. You can also check my Instagram as well. And I will see you approximately in several days. Bye-bye.